So there we have it. It was uh, Clock Balakola who have uh, progressed into the next round of the Leinster Club Senior Hurling Championship. They've beaten Rapparees by a scoreline of 117 to 12 points. And as always, this is the match reaction and match report, match review, whatever you want to call this uh, here on GA Fan TV, where we break down games, talk about games after they have finished. And in the end, it is the leash-based team, Clua Balakola, or Clock Balakola, I should actually call them, who have uh, progressed into the next round. They've won the game by a scoreline of 117 to 12 points in the end. Um, yeah, look, listen, it wasn't the best game of Hurling, in all honesty, that we'll ever watch or we'll ever see. I mean, you'd certainly see much better games on a regular basis. But, I mean, we all know the conditions here in uh, in Ireland and, you know, or wherever you're based in the country at the minute. I mean, I'm sure it's absolutely freezing and it certainly is where I am here in Dublin at the minute. You know, you're talking about minus two, minus three degrees. You know, for anyone who's played hurling or football, like it's it's very very hard to get yourself up for for uh, for a game of, of hurling or football when you're in those conditions. And I mean, it, it took a while for both of these two teams to settle. It really really did. It was low scoring. It was a bit cagey at times as well. It was very stop start. Um, and I know a lot of the times people would look at the referee and think, um, oh, you know, you should have let it flow. You should have let the game go and, and and whatnot. But to be perfectly honest with you. I really did feel like he, you know, he didn't really do a lot wrong, in in my opinion, to be perfectly honest. I really don't. I think uh, there were there was some questionable, or there were some obvious fouls in there from both sides. A lot of cynical fouling at different times. Both sides were playing a sweeper, um, which made it very hard for either side to uh, to to get going. Rapperies, like they were coming into this game with a significant goal threat, sixteen goals in five games in the Wexford. Senior Hurling Championship and certainly goals is, uh, you know, th that's their main recipe for success, you know, in, in Wexford. That was what got them going. That was what got them over the line in many ways with those 16 goals. And they only created one goal chances from what I remember. And that was the very early goal goal chance for Oshin Pepper, who flashed it wide. Other than that, I thought Cl uh, Clock Balakola done a tremendous job uh, in defence. The likes of Stephen Marr, Owen Doyle in there as well. They did a really, really good job at limiting rapperies. And anytime rapperies were trying to go direct into that full forward line, it was the likes of Owen Doyle or Stephen Marr who were scooping up the dirty ball or the loose ball as well. Um, and it was what, in many ways, you know, stopped rapperies from settling into the game or finding any rhythm. The only real score threat that seemed to come from rapperies was Ryan Matten. And that was from Freezer, place balls the majority of the time. He actually hit nine points from place balls. Like Jack Kelly with a point, Ushin Pepper with two points. Ushin Pepper's points both came actually in the uh, in the in the first quarter, which probably show you that he probably didn't he didn't get enough ball. In my opinion, I don't think rapperies were quick off the block or quick enough at releasing the ball. They seemed to dilly dally in the ball too much, and they allowed, as I said before, you know the light, whether it was Stephen Picky Mara times as well or Willie Hoyland, Willie Dunphy. Like they allowed those lads to force the turnovers, to turn the ball over. And then when they did get into Rappery's full forward line, um, or full back line, or you know, I should say, or when Rappery's got into Clock Balacola's uh, full forward line, they were just being turned over and they were losing possession. And um, you know, in the end it was it was Clock Balacola who certainly rose to the occasion more so as the game went on. And I suppose like in the first half in particular. You know, like Rapperies definitely did start the better. Obviously, you had that early Ushin Pepper goal chance who who flashed the uh, the ball wide. Um, Ushin Pepper had a tremendous score uh, in the twentieth minute, a point off the shoulder. There was a lot of fouls. It was very stop start. Um, it was a, a shootout of freeze in many ways. You had Stephen Pickymara at one end, and then you had uh, Ryan Matten at the other end. And you know, it was very stop start. Very a lot, referee calling a lot of fouls. Um and but really the turning point I think was really it was cagey even at, in in the second quarter of the first half, Rapperies led eight points to four, um without really looking that great and and certainly clock Balacola they were getting into good positions at different stages in the game I felt they were getting in behind, but they were being pulled back and there was a couple of cynical fouls but for me the turning point in this game was definitely the end of the of the first half clock Balacola hit four points. Without reply, uh, the likes of Stephen Bergen, Stephen Picky Mar as well, with a couple of scores, and I think that definitely gave Clock Balacola the confidence that they could go on and win this game because you know without having playing great and having struggled for majority of the first half, they went in level eight points apiece, and I think they were getting a lot more joy, you know, when they were getting the right ball into 
Rapperies full back line, even though Rapperies were playing a, a sweeper in there with Kevin Foley, they were getting in behind and they were getting some joy when the delivery was right. And that was ultimately how the goal came. You know, a wonderful ball into Stephen Picky Mar, um, maybe slightly over hit ball in some ways. And, and certainly a lot of people around the country wouldn't have the confidence to do what he did a little flick of the hurl and then put a you know, just looped it over the goalkeeper. A brilliant goal. Both sides were gone you know, trading back and forth a little bit after that. A couple of stop-start frees. A cu- couple of questionable points as well. There was a, a free that was given the way of uh, of, of Clock Balakala at one stage and it certainly wasn't a 45. And then there was another opportunity where the ball went over the bar for rapparees and then the referee overturned or the, one of the umpires overturned it. So it was, there was, you know, there was a lot of confusion at different stages going on. A lot of yellow cards. Like I think rapparees had six yellow cards in total in the second half and Kevin Foley probably could have been sent off there towards the end with that high elbow. Mm-hmm. Um, and like what I said before, Clock Balacola, they rose to the occasion and the likes of Owen Doyle, even Lee Clear, Clear as well, to be fair, done uh, a lot of brilliant work in around that full back line. I thought he was uh, very impressive stuff. Um, and yeah, you know, the, the further the game went on, the more the game went on, the more Clock Balacola rose more to the occasion. I felt like Rappery started to fade a lot more. And I didn't really feel like up until the final 10 to 15 minutes, I didn't really feel as if um, the 10 week layoff mattered too much up until that point because Rapparees were still in it. But in the final 10 to 15 minutes, it was fairly evident that they were a little bit, um, they weren't sharp as what we had seen in the in the Wexford Senior Hurling Championship. And, you know, Stephen Picky Marr, unbelievable on the day with 1 7, an obvious candidate for a man of the match in, in most people's eyes. With um, you know, a couple of points from play, a goal from play as well. Majority of points were from freeze. He would be an obvious choice for a man of the match. But to be honest, I'd probably look at Darren Marr or maybe even Ode- Owen Doyle. Uh, in all honesty, because uh, the defensive work from Clock Balakola was very impressive, and Rapparees have been very efficient in front of goal this season. As I said at the start of video, sixteen goals in five games, and um, you know, as, as it was, like I think. You know, the conditions were certainly a lot different to what rapparees would be used to. You know, they wouldn't be a side. This team, you know, this club has never played, um, you know, winter hurling as such. None of these players have for their club. Obviously, it was 43 years ago the last time they came through the Wexford Senior Hurling Championship. So they wouldn't be used to these conditions. And, you know, that style that they play, that running game and the running off the shoulder. I think it works really well during summer when the grass is a lot fresher. Um, you know, you, you can spring around a lot more. The conditions aren't as heavy. Grasses aren't as as heavy. Pitches aren't as heavy. And I think that's, you know, probably what cost them as well is obviously a two-month layoff and the fact that, you know, you're playing in, in harsh winter as opposed to when they won their county final. It was back in middle of September. They would have played the majority of their championship games in Wexford in the middle of August, September. So, you know, it is what it is. That's obviously how Wexford run their uh, county championship. Um, you know, if their county final was two weeks ago, would they have won this game anyway? I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe uh, Clock Balacola would have found a way to, to win the game. Um, and yeah, Stephen Picky Mar with a couple of points late on. Robbie Phelan with a point in there as well. We'll just run through the scores actually in total. So for Clock Balacola, Stephen Bergen with three points, Willie Hoyland with a point, Stephen Picky Mar with one eight actually in total. Robbie Phelan with a point, Willie Dunphy with a point, and Killian Dunn with a point as well. For Rapparees, Ushin Pepper with two points, Jack Kelly with a point, and Ryan Matten with nine points. Didn't clock a point from Lenny Connolly as well of Rapparees. Uh, quite enough game from his point of view. And uh, yeah, huge result for, for Clock Balacola. They progress into the Leinster Club semi-finals. And um, look, listen, I didn't know a lot about them before the game, in all honesty. Certainly know a good bit about them now. I know they're definitely a good team and certainly one to watch out for and potentially maybe dark horses in this uh, Leinster Club Senior Hurling Championship. I mean, who knows? But uh, yeah, look, listen, my name is Aaron anyways. I'll wrap this up here. If you could leave a like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, if you could subscribe, that would be absolutely brilliant and leave a like. Let it, Leave a comment down below. Let me know uh, your thoughts on the game if you did watch it and uh, I'll see you all in the next video.